Hello and welcome to consoletraining.com. My name is Alex Hughes and today we're going through a really quick function available in MA3D that's been around since 3.1. Let's jump straight in. I've got a little MA3D set up here with just a little show file running. I'm running 3.2.2.16 which is the latest version available at the time of recording. But this feature has been around since 3.1 and is heavily documented in the release notes. So Many of you may be aware that if you've got a camera pool and you're running the same user, you can actually manipulate your MA3D and stage view using just preset cameras. And if you modify it in MA3D, it'll save that position as well. Sometimes I want a little bit more control and when the system that's running MA3D is, you know, on a screen away from me, it's really nice to have, you know, proper pan and tilt XY control so that you can do little things like zoom in, check a focus or something and interact with it like you would with a moving light fixture. And the procedure is incredibly simple. We're going to patch a fixture. So we go to patch and fixture schedule. We create a new layer called I'm going to call it camera control. We then go from library, we search for MA lighting, we select the camera controller, we give it a name, I'm going to call it camera control one, we only want one of them, I'm going to give it the fixture ID of 2001, and we'll patch it in a universe that nothing else is on, so 30.1 in this case. We then save. And then we need to clone a camera now. You can create a fresh new camera, but the easiest way of doing it is to always use a camera that you like the original position of. I normally use the front camera, and when we go to clone this camera or we use this camera's position, this is what the zero zero mark is. So this is essentially, we're setting the home position of the camera. So I set it in the position I like, which is front. I then go store, like I would with the normal view. We're going to call it DMX cam. We're then going to right click on it and it gives us this little thing which gives us all the position information for it. And then there's one that says fixture and we assign a fixture to it. Now we select the camera and now if we bring up fixture 2001. And we make sure that we're in fine mode. We can alter the parameters. And we can even save positions. And it's acting exactly like a moving light would. So I've got a zoom as well that I can use. And if we call up an all preset pool, we can store this and we can call it close shot. And then we can pull back. Or we can clear out. So if we clear out, it goes back to its home position. We can reselect the fixture again. We can then mess with the X and Y a bit. So we'll bring in a bit more on the Y axis. Down on the X. We'll come across a little to the left. And then grab our pan. We'll tilt a little bit in. And of course, with a, with a system like a command wing or a console, you can obviously do these positions a bit better. We're going to call it uh, OP shot. And we're going to do one more. I'm going to pan swiftly like that. And then we're going to come across. And see, by just manipulating one parameter, we can get sort of a really nice fake uh, tracking jib shot, essentially. And then we're going to focus in a bit. It's really good for previews, especially if you're shooting a video. We're going to go up a little as well. And then we're going to call this P-Shot. Now, with three positions in build, we can even grab these. We're going to grab 2001. 
we're going to call all the parameters into the programmer. We're going to call it camera, camera position, camera. We're then going to put it into close shot. Store as a second queue. OP shot. Store as a second queue. And P shot. And we can see that they're all jump cuts. So I can leave them like this. And there's no transition that just goes between them. Sort of like you're cutting between four cameras. But we can also put on a fade time. Now the fade times obviously are not the world's greatest. Going and making major changes you do sometimes get them a little bit juddery and shaky. But you could obviously finesse it a bit, have a couple of cues in the middle if you're looking for a certain shot. But we've got essentially 3D camera positioning now that works for us. And you could obviously track this into a normal cue list if you wanted to, or you could have a command that fires certain things. But it's a really handy feature that not many use. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to email us. Uh, our preferred method of support is via our Facebook group, but you can always email us via the contact form on our website or leave a comment on our Facebook video or on our YouTube video. And be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and if you've got Facebook, Facebook as well, because we occasionally release some stuff there. Thanks for watching.